25 years ago, having a group of nearly 1,000 Glammies and 5,000 allies must have seemed unimaginable. But here we are. I can remember back in 1995, there were 14 of us who uh, got together at a partner in Washington, D.C.'s house, a guy named John DeVincentis, and he truly is the founder of Glam. He uh, realized that uh, this was 1995 and we needed to do something if we wanted to be at the forefront of LGBTQ issues in McKinsey. And so he pulled together those folks that he happened to know that were LGBTQ. Um, and 14 of us uh, went down to, uh, to his house in, in, in Washington, D.C. for a dinner. It was other Glammies, like we all discovered that we existed. At the time, there were seven of us, and we said, well, that's, that's really cool that there's seven of us. But, you know, flash forward, there may be two people in the Dubai office, and are they going to go through what we went through before we discovered each other? And so out of that came Glam Allies. Allyship is crucial, and being a good ally means that you have a deeper understanding of the community to which you're an ally. One of the most important topics within there is something that people call intersectionality. And at first I didn't quite understand what that meant, but essentially it is taking different parts of our identity and understanding what those experiences look like. So as we think about being great allies, part of it also is making sure that we understand that it's not a one size fits all experience. Glam has such an incredible history and we're so strong today, but we're not stopping. We're excited to push forward together to be bigger, and better and brighter still in the future. We're particularly grateful to all the leaders who have helped us along the way, and particular to those who has helped to put DNI and in particular GLAM on the map. One of the things that has been super inspirational is to see the growth of the GLAM Global Conference from 2001, when it was a virtual event, to 2018, where we held it in Lisbon alongside the Alliance, and we brought 300 plus of our colleagues with a lot of senior executives from around the world from our clients to really talk about how we move LGBTQIA rights in the world. We're um, making a real difference in terms of leadership through the LGBTQ masterclasses that we host with uh, pro bono consulting that we're doing um, for the queer community. Now, with purpose at the center of our firm's agenda, it's time to do even more. More to elevate the prominence of the Alliance and of our LGBTQ leadership around the world more to work for global acceptance, especially in complex environments, and more to inspire meaningful change for us and for all of our communities. A lot of what has been accomplished has been really sort of locally grassroots led. And so in a lot of ways, we've actually sort of grown and formalized what we're doing globally, which is fantastic. But that never should, and I don't think ever will, eclipse actually what's done from the bottom up. For me, this is personal and it's a high priority, but even more importantly, it's a priority for our firm. We seek to ensure that there are no glass closets or ceilings, that everyone can be all that they want to be at our firm, and that we stand as a beacon for diversity and inclusion. And I want to thank GLAM for the role it's played over the last quarter century and for the role it will play in the future. Take care.